the Lone Star Showdown. Potentially the biggest game in Kyle Field history at Texas A&M. Texas is traveling to Texas A&M. Texas A&M is five and a half point underdogs. The winner of this game will play against Georgia in the SEC Championship. Not can, but will play Georgia in the SEC Championship. Texas's first year in the SEC. One of the favorites to win the SEC. Texas A&M. 20 to 1 odds. You know, if you were pretty sharp, like someone on this show, you would have taken that 20 to 1 odds for them to win the SEC Championship. And uh, they've never made it to the SEC Championship. In fact, they haven't won a conference championship since they came back um, as double digit underdogs in, you know, what was that, 1999 uh, in the Big 12? So it, it's been a long time. Might have been long. It might have been 96, 98. I, I don't remember. Right. This is a. This is the game of the year. All right. In terms of like college football playoff implications, conference championship implications, the rivalry aspect. It's been renewed after being gone for over a decade. These fans hate each other. Both of these teams refer to each other in their own fight songs, and it is not with. Uh, it is not amicable, right? There is a lot of animosity between these fan bases. It is, you know, the, what do they call them? The Pogues versus the, the Kooks. In the from the uh, Outer Banks. And from Outer Banks. This, this is kind of what this is, right? This is huge. This is massive. This game means a ton to both fan bases. You're going to see Texas fans in Cal Field. You're going to see a sea of maroon. You're going to see him sawing off those horns. You are going to see potentially the largest crowd that we've ever seen at Kyle Field and potentially the largest crowd that we may ever see at Kyle Field with the renovation that they had. I know that Ole Miss game a few years back currently has the record at Kyle Field, but that they also made renovations that took away some seating. So, But they were pretty close uh, with that LSU game. So I – this is going to be at least be the second or first most people that Kyle Field has ever had. It is going to be loud. Northgate's going to be rock, rocking. College stations, infrastructure might collapse because of all the influx of people coming in. This is going to be insane. All right. And you have a, a Texas team that, where credit where credit's due, they haven't stumbled where others have, right? But you can look at their schedule and maybe point some fingers and be like, whoa, whoa, whoa. The SEC did you a lot of favors this year to put you in the position that you are, right? And then when you had a chance to prove yourself against Georgia, they did not do that. But then you look on the Texas A&M side of things and you look at, you know, losses to Notre Dame at home. You look at the South Carolina loss, which you got you got mutilated in that game, right? Mutilated. We've talked about South Carolina being a good football team. And then you talk about that last week, overtime, four overtime loss to Auburn, Pretty emotional, heartbreaking, but because Oklahoma beat Alabama and because Florida beat Ole Miss, you have all of your goals ahead of you as a Texas A&M football team in year one under Mike Elko. Yeah, I, wow, you said it. this game means just so, so much. I, I cannot wait for it selfishly. I think as a, a third non-biased third party here, it's good. I, I can say we're glad that Texas and Texas A&M are playing each other on Thanksgiving weekend. That's how it should be. And it's a shame it's been taken from us for a while now. It's good to be back in this football game. I don't know how I feel about this. I, I tried. I went back and forth. I'm trying to picture ways for Texas to win. I'm trying to picture ways for A&M to win. I just don't know who's going to show up on either side. I get it. Texas has probably been – second maybe third most consistent team in the country outside of that one game against Georgia but when Texas A&M defensive line wreaks havoc in football games they can take it over we saw it in the second half at Cow Field against LSU we saw what Georgia's defensive line did against Texas back in Austin a couple months ago it's going to be really interesting. The thing that worries about me about AM is defensively, they have given up a lot of explosive plays, 10 plus plays or more, you know, on that on the defense side of the football. They're 13th in the country in or I'm sorry, excuse me, 13th in the SEC in that bottom quarter there. Texas, on the other hand, is first. Now, yes, some of that is schedule. I get that. However, 
I do think it's a little bit worth noting in Georgia a team who I know they've struggled offensively too, but they still didn't get much going. I do think Texas defense is legit. I just, I don't know how legit because we've talked about their team and their schedule and the quarterbacks they've played so far. I mean, my goodness, they, now maybe it's just they haven't looked good against them and that's credit to Texas. I think it's somewhere in the middle in terms of being overrated and being this elite football team defensively, but oh, it's scary. And even penalties too, right? So a and I've been frustrated, right, recently because of the penalties that have gone against them, right? They're 14th in the conference in penalty yardage per game, which, you know, that's a lot. So you don't want that many penalties. Um, actually, 14th in the SEC. Texas, Texas, on the other hand, though, does not force many penalties. They are last in the conference in opposing teams' penalties. So that could be a play there. Obviously, a and loves – I know, which obviously a and loves to run the football. You know, they're second in the SEC running the football. UT is fourth in stopping the run. Texas A&M is 10th in stopping the run. Um, excuse me, they're 12th in stopping the pass. A lot, a lot of storylines here. I think you just kind of got to throw it away, and I'm just going to middle it. I know it's kind of soft. I know it's a cop-out here, but I genuinely believe it's going to be a fourth-quarter football game. And when that happens in Cal Field, an arrival game, who knows what can happen. You throw the statistics out of the way. And by the way, you've said it before many times, Quinn Ewers, I still like him. I still think, you know, he's the best chance. I don't think he's hurt. I'm not too worried about that. But his mobility is not good as it is. His pocket presence is not good as it is. If his ankles are even a little bit limited, all right, like it's he's going to struggle. When he gets pressure, like he really struggles. And you can see it snowballing. I do want to ask you this, though. Over under two and a half quarterbacks playing this football game, more like an entire drive. I'm not talking about uh, putting one play in for Wigman, one play in for yeah. Arch Manning. I'm talking about like an actual drive with Wigman and Arch Manning, not due to injury. Uh, I'm going to say under. Uh, I think there have been several opportunities this season once Marcel Reed came in, especially that South Carolina game, for Connor Wigman to come in, and they didn't do it. So I, I think they're they're fully set on Marcel Reed being his quarterback. I'll say this: I, I've been, I think, a little bit. I've been underrating Texas's defense. You know, for the majority of the year, I haven't given them enough credit. They're really good, okay, and, and they have talent at all all of the levels, okay, all of the levels. It's not as dominant in the interior, right, as it has been in past years. And I think, like, a gap scheme like A&M's with Colin Klein, I, I think they could gash them up the middle if Anthony Hill, uh, if they get their hands on Anthony Hill, right? I think that could happen. But that secondary has been just really impressive for Texas. Really, really, really impressive for Texas. And Marshall Reed, he's looked better every single week. I think that there are mistakes to be had. Uh, right. I think that he's made mistakes. He's missed throws. And I don't think you can do that in big games like this. Right. I do think that that interception looking back at it from last week, I don't think it was necessarily his fault. I think there was a little bit of a, a tug by the DB that kind of threw off the timing uh, of Trey Watson on that play. I don't think that was his fault. Right. I, what I think it's going to come down to is whether or not Texas A&M chooses and wants to run the football down Texas's throat. I think they can. I think they can. Chase Basantis played some snaps last week against Auburn. I anticipate him being a full go. All right. This offensive line is going to be a full go. Okay. Amari Daniels. Well, who knows if Ruben Owens is playing right? Amari Daniels has played well. All right. Who knows if Ruben Owens is playing? I don't know that he's will be even in shape, right? Because he's been out for so long, but he's been practicing the last couple weeks. Okay. That that is a that's a true statement. Okay, we'll see what the injury reports. We're recording this on Tuesday, so we have no way of knowing what the injury reports are going to look like for this upcoming weekend. Um, for Texas, I think Quinn Ewers has had some stinkers. I think A and M has given up explosive plays. I haven't been in love with Texas's receivers all season. I do think that Texas A and M has had issues you know, covering tight ends in certain games. I think Gunnar Helm can definitely eat up uh, in this game, but. My AM preseason prediction and Texas prediction. Well, for AM, I predicted road losses to South Carolina and Auburn. And I also predicted a home win against Texas. I'm going to predict that 
in this game. I'm going to predict that Texas A&M makes it their first SEC championship game in its history and that they leave their rival Texas at the doorstep on the outside looking in and the SEC championship game. I don't feel great about it. I think Texas has played really well, but I also think that they've just been a beneficiary of a really, really not bad schedule. I know Arkansas is pretty physical, but Jaquin and Jackson averaged five yards carrying that game. But uh, they didn't really – it just didn't happen. I, I think Texas a and I know what Texas is going to try to do. They're going to load the box. They're going to put Marcel Reed in the bottom. But Marcel Reed played his best game of the season last week, and I know that that was in a loss to Auburn against a team, which, by the way, Auburn, probably one of, if not the most explosive offensive teams in the SEC – that just no one's talking about it, right? Because they've turned the ball over a ton and struggled to score in the red zone. I also think Texas struggles to score in the red zone, right? I think if they are going to score, they got to make big plays. And I, I think that this AM secondary will be ready. And I think that this defensive line is also ready to go. And I, I, I just, I got to believe that this Texas a and team, I think both I think the fan bases hate each other more than these players, right? Because they haven't been a part of that rivalry for years. But Nick Scordon is a College Station kid, right? I I know Nick Scordon's feelings towards LSU, and I would imagine that those are reciprocated towards the team in the West. I think that Nick Scordon might be in for a big game, you know, uh, even with Kelvin Banks. I, I think that right tackle has been a has been a big old problem for Texas. It's been a big old problem. I think A and M can get to them. I know they've only had twenty three sacks on the year, but part of that is like you know Lenore Sellers breaking out of sacks, right? You know some of uh, Taylor Green, Green breaking out of sacks, even though we A and M had a lot of sacks in that game. I think that there is room for Quinn Ewers to go down. Which, by the way, pressure to sack rate is pretty abysmal. So I, I think Quinn Ewers kind of has a stinker in this game. And I think that Texas A&M finds a way in a low-scoring football game to win this game at home. Do you think if this, if this game gets into the 30s, do you still believe Texas A&M can win? No. No. I think yeah. I think if Texas scores 30-plus points, I, I think Texas will win. Yeah. I, I, think, I think I tend to agree with you there. It's going to be really interesting. I also think Will Lee and Jaden Hill, two guys that were banged up in that Auburn game, sounds like they're coming back. That would be huge, especially against Quinn Ewers. And obviously those receivers are gettable, but you need to have your guys going and playing well, and then you can focus on stopping the run. If a can stop the run, it looks really, really interesting. Also, starting early. Don't go down big in this game. Don't go down early. Don't Get that it. crowd behind you because – Ask anyone. Ask Trey Zoon, right? <laughs> Trey Zoon's. I know he. I know how he feels about Texas. I know he's he's amped up about this game. Um, Quinn Torian Ewers, York. obviously. Torian York's from Temple. He's, he's not that far away. He knows. He knows what this rivalry means. He didn't get recruited by the Longhorns, regardless. So I uh, the I I think it's on both sides. I think both teams will be amped up, ready to go. I do want to ask you this last question for me. Quarterback edge? No, no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. Obviously, I, I do think there is one. Quinn Ewers, like, is a probably better quarterback than Marcel Reed. Although he's more proven. When when Quinn Ewers is playing bad football, like his his floor is, uh, you know, pretty pretty darn low, and we've seen that before. However, uh, I do want to ask you this: If Texas does lose, let's call it by double digits, right? I think if it's a if it's a one. Look, if it's a within you know ten point loss, I think they should still probably be in because of who has lost behind them. Now, should they deserve to be in? I don't know necessarily because who have they beat. But you could say the same thing about a lot of other teams. You know that is also probably going to be in as well. But if they lose by double digits here, you think they fall out? Well, first of all, should they? But do, then, do you yes. think they will? They should, but they will not. Yeah. There is something called ranking inertia, yeah. where for some reason that people believe like wherever you were ranked before you either move up or down based on where you were ranked before. When I think that ranking should be more dynamic because teams that you beat teams that you lost to are also playing football games and ranking should be dynamic and they're not inherently. They're not because the college football playoff committee just, is that way. The AP poll is that way. There's poll and ranking inertia all the time. Texas should not even be at three, probably, 
based on their resume. Now, are they probably the third best team in the country? Yeah, probably. They're probably a top five power rated team in the country. Sure. Absolutely. But uh doesn't matter. Give me the Aggies in this game.